Well, my supervisors had some information that they suspected it might be maintenance related. So they went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Both the NTSB investigation and the legal inquiry surrounding the crash of Flight 191 eventually converged on Tulsa. What was finally revealed there shocked the world of commercial aviation. Sixth of June, 1979, 12 days after the crash of Flight 191, the FAA took the unprecedented step of grounding the entire fleet of DC-10s in America, a total of 138 planes. The order affected hundreds of thousands of the traveling public and cost the airlines involved millions in revenue. It had never happened before to an American fleet. Every DC-10 in this country, or any DC-10 trying to fly to the United States, could not do so. The economic impact was huge, and at McDonnell Douglas, it was devastating. Within days, they started losing order after order after order for new DC-10s. Every day the DC-10s were not flying, the cost and the pressure grew. It was a very dramatic action. We had a lot of questions, a lot of concerns about the grounding of the airplanes and why we did it. We had criticism from many sources. The process that led the FAA to take this monumental step was intense. A major factor was what was discovered in the days prior to the grounding at American Airlines maintenance facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma. During the first week of June, NTSB investigators searched through the maintenance records of the DC-10 that became Flight 191 and began to form a theory about what caused the crack in the pylon bulkhead. I remember getting a call that was on Saturday morning. Do you think that this could be the result of a maintenance operation such as if you remove the engine or put the engine back on? And it all dawned on me, just as clear as could be that yes, I said, not only could it be, but I can prove it. Because there was a deformation that was occurring right at the very top of this where the mating clevis, where the engine and the pylon come together as if the clevis had impacted that area and had produced the downward motion onto the flange that caused the crack. In order for the clevis to go down and make an impact, it had to have been disassembled at the time when that impact occurred. That clevis would not normally be at that position. So it just became crystal clear right at that very moment. The damage occurred almost two months before the crash, when during a required repair, Flight 191's left engine pylon assembly needed to be removed. Maintenance procedures prescribed by McDonnell Douglas call for mechanics to first remove the engine from the pylon, then remove the pylon from the wing. But in an effort to save time and reduce the possibility of errors in reconnecting the various components, mechanics at Tulsa plan to remove the engine and pylon as a single unit, using a forklift to support the assembly as it was being disconnected from the wing. McDonnell Douglas was aware of the procedure, but did not approve of its use. Because if the forklift truck isn't perfectly aligned with the engine, if it's not perfectly pressurized by the hydraulic system of the forklift truck, the engine won't be properly fastened and you could do damage to the engine or the wing. However, since maintenance of an aircraft is the exclusive responsibility of an airline, McDonnell Douglas had no authority to stop the practice. American Airlines, as with any airline, has the authority to, based on their experience, in-service experience, modify a manufacturer's maintenance procedure. And it can be done without FAA approval. What's more, American was using this one-step procedure on all of its DC-10s. And on this particular aircraft, it was back at the Tulsa maintenance base for its required maintenance procedures. 30th of March, 1979. After a forklift was positioned under the engine, maintenance personnel disconnected the rear attachment point of the engine pylon assembly. But before they could remove the front attachment bolts, the work shift changed. And while they were gone, the hydraulic pressure in the forklift had a leak in it or changed, and it tilted the pylon, which they didn't see. 
This caused the rear attachment point of the engine pylon assembly to jam back up into its fitting on the wing, cracking the rear bulkhead of the pylon. The new workshift didn't notice the damage, which occurred inside the pylon, and finished what they thought was a routine repair. During subsequent flights, the crack in the bulk had expanded until that fateful day in Chicago when it completely ripped open, causing the engine pylon assembly to tear off the plane. But this wasn't the end of the story. For during the ensuing inquiry, investigators discovered that two other airlines, Continental and United, were also using a one-step engine pylon removal procedure, although United's methods employed an overhead crane instead of a forklift. The FAA ordered emergency inspections of those airlines' DC-10s, 